Hello and welcome to a quick tutorial on how to submit your own project to the community contributions on thecodingtrain.com. So at thecodingtrain.com on the homepage you'll find the most recent coding challenge and then if you click on coding challenges you'll find all the coding challenges that I've done and each one of those has an individual page with a description, the video, a uh, list of links of things, all the source code with a P5 web editor or on GitHub as well as, here it is, my favorite part, the list of things that other people have made in response as creative versions or twists or improvements on the thing that I coded in the video itself. So uh, if you're wondering how you can submit yours, I'm going to show you how to do that. So let's pick arbitrarily, not so arbitrarily, the 10 print coding challenge. It's the one that happens to have the most community contributions. Let's see if we can get another one to beat that record maybe. Um, and I'm going to walk you through the steps. I'm going to make my own little twist on it, change the code, and then submit my own version to it. So here I am on the 10 print coding challenge page. I've got the description, I've got links described in the videos, and then here, look at all these community contributions, awesome. So there's a link here to add your own version. I'm gonna to go to that with some instructions. You could just look at that, but I instead am gonna to try to walk you through the process. So the first thing I need to do is make my own version. Presumably you've already made yours, but I'm gonna to go to view code, web editor, click on that, and I'm gonna uh, play it and quickly just make some changes. So there you go, this is my variation of the 10 print coding challenge where instead of drawing a line forward or backward, I have drawn a circle and I have filled it white or filled it black. So now that I've made this project, uh, I'm going to save it, I've got the link to it, I'm going to go over here to the coding train and I'm going to click on add your own version. So I'm going to click on that, it's going to take me to this strange page, oh what's the deal with this page? The format for this page is something called YAML which stands for yet another markup language, seriously. Um, and you can see here, this is the metadata associated with this coding challenge. It has a title, the number of the challenge, the date it was recorded, the video ID, which is its YouTube video ID, that's where the source code is, that's the P5 web editor, these are various links. And what's most important here is contributions. So this is the part that you need to edit. Um, and I would suggest that you just put yours at the end. You could slot it in wherever you want. You could put it first. I guess there's no actual system for this, but in terms of uh, uh, where I would ask you to put it, I think it makes sense to have these somewhat in order of contribution. So I'm gonna go all the way to the end, and the easiest thing for me to do is to simply copy paste one of these um, contributions, which has four fields in it, title, author, URL, source, so I'm going to copy paste this and then I'm going to paste it below. Now I just realized you might be asking kind of an important question. Where am I? Where am I editing this? What's going on? So this is actually the GitHub website. Uh, you'll notice this is a URL on github.com. GitHub is a website for hosting Git repositories. A Git repository is a collection of documents with a history of all the versions of those documents, mostly used for tracking the history of a source code related project. I would refer you to my videos on Git and GitHub. Um, I have a whole series of about 10 to 15 videos that kind of like talk more about the, that, the, the Git software and the GitHub website itself. So if that's unfamiliar to you, you might go back and look at those. But you don't actually need to know anything uh, you don't need to know all of those details to submit your contribution. You just need to be able to follow these steps. However, these steps will only work if you have a GitHub account. So if you don't already have a GitHub account, you will need to sign up and be logged in for this to work. So once you've done that, I'm going to go down here. I'm going to add mine. I'm going to change the title to uh, um, Coding Train Demo Contribution. The author is me. Daniel Schiefman. And then uh, now it's time for the URLs. So I'm going to consider, I'm going to go under share, I'm going to consider, and, and again, yours might not be a P5 web editor sketch. It might just be a website, it might be a Git repository, it, might, it could be anything, but you just need a link to your documentation of the project. So I'm going to pick this full screen one, whoops, which is this, and I am going to, where was I? I'm going to paste that in here. Then I am going to go back here and I'm just going to do the editor view, which is that, and I'm going to paste that in here. 
And then one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to automatically make a mistake because it's very common that you'll mess something up. So for example, what if I forget the quotes here? I'm going to make another mistake. I'm going to add like a couple of extra spaces here and I'm going to have this have an extra space here. So I'm going to make those mistakes on purpose. 10 print contribution circles instead of lines. Now here's the other important thing that I would really like you to do. When reviewing these pull requests, it's really nice if there's a link to the project in this optional extended description. It makes it really easy to click and see what you made. And it lets me see them much more easily to like know what to share and like just be able to react to it. So I would ask that you uh, add a link to you here. Link to demo here. So I'm going to go back to here. I'm going to go under share. I'm going to click this. Uh, and I'm going to click this. Now, um, then this is the option. Now, it will say you cannot commit to the master branch, but I want to go to create a new branch for this commit and start a pull request. A pull request is a term that refers to asking me, or not me in particular, but the Coding Train website to pull your new changes in, to pull your submission in. So I'm going to call this Shiftman 10 print. Contribute, uh, just Shiftman 10 print. I'm going to hit commit changes. Now you can see this is now the last step here open a pull request. Um, and it's pretty much filled in for me now because it took the commit description in here. So I'm just going to uh, click create pull request. And then here is the next really important thing. And we're going to wait for this to run. I should say what's running here. This is what's known as a unit test is running and it's running via continuous integration on a service called Circle CI. So I actually have a whole set of video tutorials also on unit testing and continuous integration that you can check out. But what it's doing is it's checking the syntax of your contribution to make sure there are no formatting mistakes in it or no missing required data pieces. And whoop, it came back now, all checks have failed, meaning there's an error. So this is something that helps you when you make your submission know whether it was done correctly. And this is so sort of off-putting to have this big red X and you feel so terrible like, oh, my submission was wrong and the test didn't pass. No, no, no. Feel good about yourself that you stretched and made an attempt and tried to submit a, a pull request. Maybe it was your first pull request on GitHub. It doesn't matter that the check failed. It's just the computer checking it. You can now make some edits or you can ask for help. At the, the coding train community is here on GitHub to help you fix it up and make sure your submission goes in correctly. But knowing that the test failed is a bit of extra information for you. So I could actually go click here on details. Scrolling all the way down through all the tests, we can get to the end and I can zoom in and it says, uh, extra space at the end of this line, URL editor. So you can see this is the error. This is and this is the error I need to fix. Unfortunately, it just finds the first error. It hasn't necessarily found all the errors, but I can go back now to my pull request. I can click on files changed. I can go here uh, and click on edit file and I can go back and I'm going to just fix all these things. So I'm going to get rid of where this. I'm going to put the quotes around here. Where did I have those? Oh, I had the extra spaces here. I'm going to click on those. And I'm going to say commit directly to the Shiftman 10 print branch. That's going to add those changes to the pull request. I'm going to hit commit changes. And now if I go back to conversation, we can see the unit tests are running again. And let's hope they work this time. There we go. All checks have passed. This branch has no conflicts with the base branch. Merging can be performed automatically. Merging is the act of accepting that pull request and merging the changes with the current website source code. So you won't actually see this button, squash and merge. And by the way, if you're wondering what squash means, it means this pull request has two commits 
two separate straight changes and squash will squash both of those into one. So it just kind of cleans up the history of the project because we don't actually need to separate these two things out in the grand history of things, uh, even though they are two separate changes for this request. So um, you won't see this because you most likely are not an administrator of the Coding Train website and you will wait for somebody here to, uh, to press that button. And once it's done, you will see, and I'm gonna do that now, once that's done, all I do is go back to the codingtrain.com website and I hit refresh. I'm going to hit refresh. And there it is. My Coding Train demo contribution by Daniel Schiefmann is there. And if I click on this, it'll take me over to there's my contribution. If I click on source code, it'll take me over to the source code page. So I should point out, I'm just showing you my, my contribution happened to be a P5 web editor sketch, but what you might want to link to could be a YouTube video, it could be just a full website, it could be a blog post, um, it could be anything you want. One quick gotcha the, um, is that for things that are YouTube videos, don't put the full URL to your YouTube video in the contribution, just put the video ID. The system itself knows to make the YouTube uh, video URL out of just the video ID. There's probably some other small details. In theory, those things are covered here under see how. If I click on see how, this is a guide to everything that I just showed you and you can see the actual format of how to um, put in your contribution. Um, and how to create a pull request, but this is also something you could um, edit and offer contributions to if there are things missing from this guide or leave them in the comments of this video itself. So thank you very much for watching this quick tutorial about submitting your own community contribution to the codingtrain.com website. I hope this encourages you to submit yours. Don't be shy, don't be afraid. We're here to welcome you in with open arms and rainbows and unicorns um, to try if this is your first time using GitHub. This is a great way for you to give that a try um, and see how it goes. So thanks so much and look forward to seeing you in a future coding challenge and having your contribution on the codingtrain.com website. Bye-bye.